you. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, coloring graphs containing no K5 subdivision. And this is joint work with Qi Qianxie, Shi Jiexie from Georgia Tech um, and a uh, professor Xing Xing Yu. So uh, several, like uh, a long time ago, people um, find that for every map, it is possible to color it with only four colors, such that no adjacent uh, areas are using the same color. And this is uh, finally proved several decades ago by Appel and Haken. Um, and uh, uh, below you can see as an example, is a map of the United States colored with only four colors. And this is the uh, well-known, the four color theorem. And if we uh, state it more rigorously, it says that every planar graph is four colorable. And here planar graph is defined uh, uh, in a rigorous way. Uh, that if we can draw a graph on the plane such that its edges intersects only at their endpoints. And uh, by the way, for the four color theorem, um, in 1997, Robertson, Sanders, Seymour, and Thomas gave a cleaner proof, and which is uh, more recognized by the Mathematics Society. And uh, we can see here, this description of a planar graph is more like a geometric way. And how can we describe it in a more combinatorics way? Um, we need another definition here. So a subdivision of a graph is defined by uh, resulting from in inserting vertices into edges in the graph zero or more times. So it's like we divide each edges into uh, paths with uh, disjoint internal vertices. And uh, with this definition, a planar graph could be defined or uh, characterized in the way that a graph is planar if and only if it contains no K5 subdivision or K33 subdivision. Um, and uh, so the four color, so in this way, the four color theorem can uh, be uh, further described as if a graph does not contain K5 subdivisions or K33 subdivisions, then it can be four colored. So there are two uh, kinds of forbi uh, forbidden patterns. And then people start to think of, what if we only forbid part of those uh, patterns? So like, what if we only forbid K5 subdivision? Or what if we only forbid K33 subdivision? And for the K33 case, it is shown actually uh, earlier by Wagner that if uh, G is a graph with no K33 subdivision, then G has a cut of at most, uh, of size at most two, or G is planar, or G is a K5. So after we have shown the, uh, after we have known the four color theorem, theorem, we know that in the case when G is planar, uh, it is four colorable. Uh, of course, when G is a K5, it's not four colorable, but this is a very special case. And when uh, G has a cutoff size at most two, then it's actually uh, it's kind of like a special structure for coloring. Let me see if we can draw something like this. So suppose this is a <laughs> suppose this is a two cut of a graph. Sorry, <laughs> it's it's hard to draw on the laptop. Suppose this is a two cut of a graph then uh, there are only two cases about the coloring out on those two cut vertices. They are either in the same color or in different colors. So when those uh, vertices are in different colors, uh, so, or in other words, we can uh, divide that graph into uh, smaller structures where we uh, consider one part of the separation with uh, an adding Oh, adding an edge to those two uh, 
cut vertices. Well, <laughs> sorry, this is ugly. So in this case, we know uh, we can find a uh, sort of a coloring of the half part of the separation. Well, uh, uh, we know that the colors of those two cut vertices are different because we added an edge to them. And we can do, uh, do it to both sides. And after that, we, we, get, we get colorings for each side such that the uh, color for the colors for the cut vertices are different. And then we can uh, merge the coloring so that we can find such a specific coloring for the whole graph. <clears throat> and this also happened for uh, the case when there's, there's a one cut. So whenever we can find uh, some kind of coloring for both sides, we can uh, combine them together if they're, if there is only one vertex in the cut set. So here we can see it's kind of uh, clear with the case, with the uh, coloring properties. In the case, the graph does not have a K3-3 subdivision from this uh, Wagner's theorem. So uh, what can we have when, the, we, when we only forbid a K5 subdivision? Um, actually, there is a more general conjecture by Hayosh in the 50s that for any positive integer k, every graph containing no k, k plus one subdivision is k colorable. So k, k plus one here means the uh, complete graph on k plus one vertices. And uh, so uh, the question we were discussing is actually a special case here when k equals four. So this Hayosh conjecture is shown to be true for k less than or equal to three with a not very uh, hard way. And it's open for uh, k equals four and five. But after several decades, uh, Catlin find a counterexample for the cases when k is at least six. So the conjecture is uh, disproved for a uh, large case. And uh, later, Erdős and Feitlovich show that uh, this conjecture fails for almost all graphs in a uh, random graph setting. So uh, this conjecture now remains open only for the k equals four and k equals five cases. <clears throat> and uh, the problem we discussed before is uh, exactly the case when k equals four here. So that's uh, another way of uh, illustrate the background of that, pro that, that problem here. And uh, for, so uh, let me state again that the problem here is to consider the coloring properties of graphs forbidding K5 subdivision. And there are some uh, previous results on that. One of those, uh, probably the most famous one of those is the kelman simmers conjecture and is proved uh, several years ago by a group from Georgia Tech that if a graph uh, containing no K5 subdivision, then that graph is planar or it admits a cut of size at most four. That is saying that if we have a five connected graph containing no K5 subdivision, then it must be planar. And uh, of course, if it's planar, we know it's full colorable. So the only case we need to concern is the cases when G is not five connected or it omits a uh, cost of size at most four. And uh, to, um, to consider that question, we need to introduce uh, like some special uh, structure here. We call it a Hayosh graph. We consider a counterexample to the Hayosh conjecture for k equals four. That is uh, a graph with no k5 subdivision and is not four colorable. So as long as we can show such a counterexample does not exist, then that conjecture would be true. 
So uh, in the sense of proof by contradiction, we consider such an example. And moreover, we, cons we consider a uh, minimum one. So uh, we define the Hayosh graph by uh, the graph is not for colorable. It contains no K5 subdivision. And subject to those two atoms, the number of vertices is minimum. So uh, Hayosh graph is a minimum counterexample to that conjecture. And there are some previous results on the property of such a Hayosh graph. Um, in 26, uh, Yu and Ziegfeld showed that every Hayosh graph must be four connected. That is, as long as there exists a cutoff size at most three, then it wouldn't be a minimum counterexample. Uh, it, uh, the sense is sort of similar to the example we just uh, we just saw with uh, a two cut. If there is a three cut, we can sort of uh, consider the different cases within the coloring of those three cut and see uh, because that is defined to be the minimum counterexample. So we know that each part wouldn't be an exam a counterexample. So in each part, there would be a four coloring. And then we, we sort of consider how to combine those uh, four colorings. And uh, it could be shown that each Hayosh graph must be four connected. And later, uh, Sun and Yu show that if G is a Hayosh graph and T is a four cut in G, then G minus T has exactly two components. That is saying that if uh, there are more than two components hang at the same four cut, then uh, some similar argument could hold that either it could be four colorable or they can sort of find a K5 subdivision uh, in that cost structure. So the only case remaining is that the graph is four connected, but not five connected. There exists a four cut and, uh, or, or we'll say that for any four cut in the graph, there are exactly two components uh, at that four cut. And uh, uh, with uh, Professor Yu and uh, uh, other two more senior students graduated from Georgia Tech, we show a stronger property of such a Hayosh graph. So we can see the figure here that uh, we know for each Hayosh graph, there exists a full cut and uh, there are two components of the full cut. And we further show that uh, if uh, one side of that uh, full cut is not trivial, that means it's not one vertex with uh, four edges to the full cut, then that said, cannot be planar. Uh, more rigorously, we show that if G is a Hayosh graph, then G does not admit a uh, full separation G1, G2, such that G1 is planar and uh, those four cut is on that order, uh, is in order on the outer cycle. And uh, the number of vertices containing those uh, four, set, uh, four cut vertices is at most six. Um, or in other words, if uh, it is planar and those uh, cut vertices are in order, then that must be trivial. So uh, in the remaining time, I will uh, briefly illustrate our proof idea to this result. Oh, sorry. Before that, uh, let's say why we uh, why we would like to consider this kind of uh, structure. This is because we know uh, there's a, a characterization of the two linked property by Seymour that uh, as long as so if you are given two vertices, as long as they are not uh, in order like of a outer cycle with a planar set. Uh, planar area, or uh, as long as it's not in the uh, situation of the left part in this graph, then we can always find the two link between those 
any two link between those four vertices, uh, given that that part is too connected. So we would like to show this because we, we want to argue that uh, actually, as long as we find a four cut, we can find any kind of uh, linkage between those four cuts in uh, further steps. So next, let me uh, start to illustrate how we uh, prove this property. So firstly, we would like to find a, some kind of a wheel in the planner part. And here a wheel is defined a bit differently with the common uh, concept. Here we define a wheel by a vertex and a cycle, uh, well, a vertex and its neighbors and a cycle, like the closest, closest cycle in the planner part uh, surrounding that vertex. So we could have more vertices on, uh, on the path connecting two neighbors of the center vertex. And further, uh, in, in this case, we would like to consider a sort of a happy wheel that we, uh, like the, the case we like is that if there is a vertex on the path connecting two neighbors and that vertex is not a neighbor of the center vertex, we wouldn't like it to be one of the cut vertices. That is saying the cut vertices, if the cut vertices are on the wheel, then it could only be the neighbors of the center vertex. And uh, with that, so if we can find such a wheel, the nextly uh, use the connectivity and uh, some other coloring uh, arguments, we can find four paths, four distinct paths connecting four neighbors of the center vertices to the cuts. And here, uh, actually there could be more neighbors to the uh, center vertex, but we only need four of those to connect to the uh, cut vertices. And as long as we can find such a structure, so the uh, next step we need is just to connect, find the two link of those uh, four vertices on the other side, on the non-planner side. And this is actually a K5 subdivision. And the branch vertices are the center vertex and the two neighbors of the center vertex. So we can see uh, the, the wheel gives you uh, uh, eight edges and then the other two edges is given by those uh, paths linked to the cut vertex and uh, connected on the other side and goes back to the cut and goes back to the other neighbor of the center vertex. So if we can find such a structure in each step like this, then uh, we can find a K5 subdivision in the graph, which contradicting the assumption that it is a Hirsch graph, which is a uh, which wouldn't have a K5 subdivision. So the the last step uh, is kind of straight. Uh, uh, is we can find uh, directly find such a two link as long as the other part is non planar using the uh, two linkage uh, statement. And we know that if one part is planar, the other part cannot be planar, given that the whole graph is not full colorable. Because otherwise, if the whole thing is planar, it must be full colorable and it wouldn't be a counterexample here. So we can find the uh, two paths in step three for free. Uh, but uh, in, in step two, uh, it, is, it is not that straightforward anymore. So when, uh, when we were looking for those four passes, uh, there could be some, uh, well, some obstructions that forbid us to find such four distinct paths. Uh, one common problem is that some certain type of five sub, uh, separations could cause problems. So if there exists some kind of five separations, we can, uh, so the uh, vertices in the middle would be less than what we need. And then 
uh, we cannot find such four passes. And to uh, get rid of that problem, we uh, actually we would consider we would also consider five sub, uh, separations within that planner part. So uh, in step one, we need to find good wheels inside uh, a sub separation of order at most five. Sorry, can, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So when we say both sides cannot be planar, uh, and then otherwise they are full colorable, but how, even if the both sides are full colorable, how do we know we can patch the colors? Oh, together? actually, so by both sides are planar here, actually yeah. we mean it's planar with the, uh, uh, with, the with the vertex in a, in, with the cut set, is it? Yeah, yeah, with the cut set in order, uh, in order of a order cycle or, or in order in, on a facial cycle. Right. order of the official cycle. Let's see if I can draw it here. So it's kind of planner in, in the way that so such four cut vertices are like this. And there could be other structures in the middle. So those would be the four cut vertices in say like counterclockwise order. <laughs> Or this is back drawing. So here we say it's uh, so in the so in the statement we actually say it is a uh, G one T planner. If you look at the second uh, second line from below, it's saying it's G one T planner. It means that uh, all the uh, cut vertices are on a facial cycle in order. And uh, if we also have, uh, it is G2T planner, that means uh, the cut vertices are also on a facial cycle in order, then we can uh, naturally merge the two coloring together. Okay, thank you. Good point. Thank you for pointing that out. So uh, the only thing, uh, well, so next we, we need to find such good wheels in four separations, as well as in five separations, as we discussed, we, we need that for, uh, the, for the process of finding the whole path. So next we discuss those uh, situations with four separations and five separations. So when we have a full separation, so we first show that if we have a full separation and uh, one part is planar, then there must be a good wheel. Um, this, this is actually not very hard to argue. And uh, so one, uh, one example is that in some cases, uh, if we cannot find a, such a good wheel, we can actually find some kind of reducible configurations that is, if such uh, goodwill do not exist, then we can find some local structures that gives us the property that if the uh, if some smaller graph is full colorable, then the whole graph would be full colorable, which uh, contradicting the minimality of the the way we take it. So one example of uh, the um, or the most easy example is that as we uh, as in the statement we we say that we only consider the cases when there is a full cut and there are at least two vertices on the planner set so in the case where when there are exactly two vertices there is only one way to connect those vertices to the cut to maintain the full connectivity uh, that is the uh, the left the left picture. So if there are only two vertices in the planner part, then uh, they must be adjacent and uh, they must have two common neighbor in the cut set and each of those uh, need to connect to one other vertex. And if we have such a local configuration, then actually we can argue that by removing 
uh, those two vertices U and V and add an edge between X and Y, then we get a smaller, uh, we get a smaller graph. And because of the minimality, we know that in the smaller graph is not anymore a counterexample. So it either contains K5 subdivision or it is full colorable. And here uh, we know that the this, this smaller graph wouldn't contain K5 subdivision because if it contains, then if it uses the new edge XY, then we can uh, replace the new edge by the past X U V Y in the original graph. And if it didn't use the path, then we can just find the exactly same K5 subdivision in the original graph. So as long as the smaller graph obtained by deleting uh, vertices U, V and adding edge X, Y, uh, if in the new graph there exists a K5 subdivision, then in the original graph, there must also be a K5 subdivision. So, uh, we know that in the new graph, there cannot be K5 subdivisions. And since it, it is not a counterexample, so we know the new graph must be full colorable. So if we take a full coloring of the new graph, and since there's an edge between X, Y, we know X and Y are in different colors. So uh, we, as long as we can find the extension of that full coloring to the original graph, such that it is proper, then we have shown the original graph cannot be a counterexample as well and contradicting our uh, very beginning assumption. So um, next we just need to extend the coloring uh, to the original part. So suppose x, y are in, so in, in this new graph, x, y are in colors one and two, um, so if uh, color color of X, say, uh, say color one didn't show in Z and W, or say if the color of Z is not one and the color of W is not one, then we can give vertex V the color one. And then we can find the color for U because X and V are in the same color. And thus, X, Z, V, W could use at most three colors. And if uh, one of Z or W is in color one, uh, so we don't have that anymore. So suppose if Z is in color one, then uh, we can firstly color vertex V because it, it now sees color of Z, color of W, and color of Y it sees three colors. So there must be at least one choice for V such that the whole thing is still proper. And after we colored V, we consider U. Uh, since it has four neighbors and X and Z are in the same color. So it also, it sees at most three uh, colors. So we can greatly find a color for U such that the whole thing is still proper. So uh, with those, uh, we can see that either in either case, as long as there is a proper coloring for the smaller graph, we can also find the proper coloring of the original graph. So that is uh, actually that is the uh, property of this local configuration, and this gives us that we would never have this, this kind of local configuration in Hayosh graph. So, uh, with, so we uh, actually we found uh, several different uh, so-called reducible configurations and uh, using those, we uh, argue that because we cannot have such local structures and the uh, And since the whole graph is full connected, we can always find a wheel in a within any full separation. Um, it's probably a good point.
point to ask, are there any questions? Well, and uh, we can do uh, similar arguments for five separations uh, because there are more vertices in the cut set. It is a bit more complicated. So uh, we, as in the previous argument, we actually can show that as long as it is not trivial, is it, uh, it is not one vertex connecting those four vertices, then there must be such a good wheel. But in five separations, there are several exceptions. So if we have a five separation as the, uh, the, the white vertices on the outer cycle, as you can see, then uh, we could have uh, <clears throat> such six obstructions that does not give us any goodwill or uh, it is not reducible configuration. So with uh, five separations, we show that the planar part either contains a good wheel or it, it is exactly one of the following structures. We can see that uh, when there's only one vertex in the five separ separation, we don't, uh, we don't actually have any control on it. And when there are two vertices, uh, still we, uh, uh, we, we cannot do a lot with it. And if there are three vertices in the middle, then we can show that this is the only case where it is not a reducible config configuration and there is no uh, goodwill. And then uh, if there are four vertices in the middle, this is the only case. And if there are more than five vertices, then there must be a goodwill. So uh, one example for that is that uh, if we have four, sorry, if we have three vertices in the middle of the five, uh, the planar side of the five separation, and it is not in the way of the one we have here, we can see here uh, we have three vertices and uh, those two are, uh, those three are actually in the path of length two. So what if instead of that, we have a cycle of length two, then actually we can see this is also a reducible configuration by similarly deleting uh, vertices u, v, w and add edges p, q, p, r, p, s. <clears throat> so again, we need to uh, argue that uh, as long as the original graph does not contain a K5 subdivision, then the new graph cannot contain a K5 subdivision. And if the new graph admits a proper five coloring, we can extend it to the original graph to find a proper five coloring. So here the uh, argument for K5 subdivision is a bit uh, more complicated than the previous one because here we actually added three edges in the new uh, uh, in the new graph, but we cannot find three uh, disjoint paths to replace those three edges in the new graph. But since we know that we are looking for a K5 subdivision, and uh, if, so the only case we use three edges incident to one vertex is that that vertex is a branch vertex in the K5 subdivision. So we consider two cases, whether vertex P uh, is a branch vertex in this new uh, graph or, well, in the K5 subdivision in the new graph, or P is not a branch vertex. When P is not a branch vertex, uh, if there exists a K5 subdivision, it uses at, uh, at most two edges incident P. So, uh, in the original graph, we can see that we can always find two disjoint paths to replace any two edges here. So for example, for to replace edge PQPS, we can use paths PVQ and PUS in the original graph. And actually that holds for any pair of edges. For PQPR, we can use PVQ, PUWR. 
And then for PRPS, we can use PVWRPUS. So if the K5 subdivision uses at most two edges, at most two new edges, then we can find these trend paths to uh, replace them. But if the K5 subdivision uses P as a branch vertex, then uh, it, it only use one edge incident to P outside of the separation. Or sorry, I should say so. If P is a branch vertex and the K5 subdivision uses all those three new edges, then it uses at most one edge uh, outside of this construction. So we can actually use a uh, vertex V to replace the vertex P here. And the outer path is replaced by VP goes out. And then uh, PQ replaced by VQ, PR replaced by VWR, and PS replaced by VUS. So uh, uh, briefly, if, uh, so we, we could still add uh, edges in the new graph such that we cannot find this joint path in the original uh, in, in the original graph as a reducible configuration as long as uh, it could be dealt with any cases in the K5 subdivision. So that was, uh, that argued that as long as there is a K5 subdivision in the new graph, then we can find a corresponding one in the original part. So again, we know that the new graph must be uh, four colorable as the number of vertices is smaller than the original, uh, the original graph or the Hirsch graph. So nextly, uh, we know that there is a, a full coloring in the new part. So we say uh, vertex P is in color one. And, and further, we know that uh, Q, R, S are all not in color one because there are edges. So in the uh, original part, we can extend this coloring. So P is in color one and we give W the same color as P. Uh, give W the same color as P. And since Q, R, S are not in P, so it wouldn't create any problem. And, uh, and after that, we find a color for U because U sees uh, the color of T, the color of S, and uh, color one here. So it sees at most three colors. So we can find the proper color for U. And lastly, we give a color to V because it sees only the color of uh, U, the color of Q, and color one. So gradually, we can find the coloring for U and V after that. So that is... Uh, a more complicated example for a reducible configuration. And uh, with five separations, we, um, we kind of discussed uh, a lot of that kind of uh, local structures and show that uh, if there's no goodwill, then we must have one of the following uh, constructure. And uh, using that, actually, we can see that um, in the uh, cases with more vertices in the middle, there are a lot of fixed edge in the, uh, in the local structure here. And actually we can use this local structure to help us either find a five, uh, K5 subdivision or find a full coloring. So with all of those argument, uh, we can show that in the, in the Hayosh graph, if uh, we have a full separation and one side is not trivial, then we can show it cannot be planar, such that the cut vertex are in order in a facial cycle. So yeah, um, this is mainly what we proved in this, uh, in, in this result. Okay, um, I think that's... Well, that's all for today. Well, thank you.
Uh, thank you, Shahan. Um, if we could all find a way to speak our, uh, to thank our speaker. <laughs> and uh, I let me uh, open the floor up for questions. Sorry, this might be a, a stupid question. For, for, the, for the highest conjecture, uh, if we cannot prove it's uh, K plus one subdivision free, then it's K colorable. Uh, is it K plus one colorable? Or what is, is there an upper bound for the, for the color chromatic number? Uh, uh, for small, for yeah. small case, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. For large case, uh, I'm not quite sure. I think for 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 Hadwiger, uh -huh. for Hadwiger, there's sort of such kind of result that, uh, uh, oh, I, I have seen that years ago, but I don't quite remember. Do you remember the paper for Hadwiger that uh, if if you forbid like uh, I think that's for like K K minor, and then the chromatic mm -hmm. number could be like how large some. Could be a, a factor of log log k or log d something. Okay. Not quite sure for you. Maybe someone from the audience could answer it. <laughs> Sorry. So the 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 counter example Kathleen gave. Uh, okay, it's not cut. Okay. okay. Uh, Yeah, what what is the the colors? What is the chromatic number of the of the counterexample? Then? Okay, maybe I'll check that. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll check it. Yeah. Later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Shafan? Okay, uh, if not, uh, thank you again. And uh, uh, I think I'll just say next week uh, we're on fall break. So we're gonna skip a week for, for our discrete seminar. So we'll reconvene again in two weeks. Um, but um, I think uh, I think with that, uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, break for the day. So thanks everyone for coming out. And thank you again, Shahan, for an excellent talk. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Thanks.